So let's put this new knowledge into action. For requirements for this demo, we're going to create a before pipeline hook to hide course API requests from web browsers. We'll create an after hook to log the time taken to process our course requests. And finally, we will ensure that these hooks only apply to the course requests, not for any of the root requests that we have. When you define a pipeline hook in the module, it applies to the whole module. So we need to address our last requirement first. We need to ensure that these pipeline hooks only apply to the course requests and not the root request. So we're going to move the courses into their own module. So the root module or the home module will keep as is. And we'll declare a new class. And we'll go ahead and move that class to another file. I'm going to remove our comment here. We also need to ensure that this module implements Nancy module as well. One nice thing about putting our courses into their own module, we can now take that root path courses and make it part of the base. And our declarations become much simpler. Now that we've removed everything, let's make sure that our application still works. To make sure our site is still running, we'll just post this new course JSON like we did before. And we get accepted. And now we can try our get and our get by ID. And everything still seems to work. With our module as it is right now, our web browser can still hit that endpoint and see the courses in JSON. We want to make sure that we actually get a 404 from our web browser and only are able to hit this via the API client curl. So let's do that. So we want to add to the before pipeline. We get reference to an ANSI context and we just need to return a response. If we return a null response from our before pipeline, the module will continue with the original route that it was going to use. However, if we decide that our context doesn't start with curl, we're going to return a 404 response. Now, if we try to hit this endpoint, we get a 404 not found, just like we were expecting. But if we use curl on the same route, we get a response. Our final requirement is to determine how long it took to process a request in the course module. So Nancy gives us, in our context, an items dictionary. And we can store things in there, say, the start time. And we may want to take our current time, subtract our start time, and determine how many milliseconds it took for that time to occur. And we can write that into our debug panel. So if we post a request, we should be able to see that come up. So our processing time was 87.005 milliseconds. To get the list, it took us one millisecond. If we try to post again, it takes little time at all because we've already spun up our site. We may also want to put this information in a header so we can alter the response. So our current response that we've, we're working with is provided for us and we can add a header. So remember, we can pass a dash i into curl, and that will give us header information that's been returned from the server. In this case, our processing time was 2.0001 milliseconds.